So normally I don't write stuff down, but I thought I should uh, should write this down. Um, uh, I wanted to first, a lot of us are going to share special memories of cause and, and cool personal things. Yeah, sit down, relax. I might talk for a while, sorry. <laughs> I'm a professor, sorry about that. And I've heard we just have more candles, so there's more coming around. So, Cos was a planner. Um, <clears throat> so we're all going to be sharing memories about, uh, I think a lot of them personal and all that that wonderful stuff. But I wanted to start off talking a little bit about what Cos meant for us as a community, us here at, at Channel Islands, our friends in the Park Service, and and all of us um, to to start it off. Um, it was difficult to figure out what to say to start off, but um, so when I first, when I think about, when I've been thinking about cause a lot this last week and before then, but I really think of um, this time in 2012 when I walked into my colleague Don Rodriguez's office and there's this little newly minted PhD student. Um, who was smiling up at me because he was sitting down and I was standing up, which is not normally the, how the height thing went, but, but that's how it started off. And he was, he was super energetic and he'd been talking to my colleague Don and, and he sent a story, he um, is in Colorado, he can't be here tonight, but he sent me a little blurb to read and he, interesting, he had this very same vision in his recollection of cause, but um, very freshly minted, very bright eyed and bushy tailed, hugely energetic, really sharp guy. And um, he laughed, and we talked for a little bit, and then he laughed, and Don and I were, what the heck, dude? This guy's great. We gotta get this guy. How can we get him to do something? And he's like, I know. Um, <laughs> and building a place like this campus upon where we all are this evening uh, is, is a challenging thing. It's a hard thing. Um, and were Cause merely, in quotes, a logistics guy, uh, it still would have been a hard challenge to help build this community. Were he only quote unquote the vision guy that would have been um, a challenging thing to do but he was those things into so many many more things um, and and you know he was like three or four people at once so it was a great value for the for the state it was a very very good uh, use of money um, if our progress here on this campus over the last 15 years um, teaches us anything it's that um, we crazy people, and I include all you in that, we crazy people um, in our quest for knowledge and progress um, can't easily be deterred when we have fantastic leadership and vision. And Cause had incredible vision and leadership. And in this ever-changing world, uh, things are going to go on. Things are going to uh, happen whether we join in or not. And this thing called, whatever we want to call it, the California Dream, Channel Islands, uh, the part, whatever, um, on this still raw edge of a continent um, has incredible potential and Cause saw that and he didn't want us just to sort of go loafing into the future. He wanted us and all of our students and all of our friends to be grasping onto that future and helping to lead that vision and, and that new tomorrow was really something he wanted to see all of us share. And so those that came before us here on this campus uh, know that this campus rode the first few waves of the revolutions of the 21st century. Just as our country rode the first few waves of modern technological inventions, the first wave of truly inclusive definitions of what it means to be an American, what it means to be a human being. And Cause was at the forefront of assuring that our current generation of students will not founder in the backwash of this coming age that seems to be full of incivility and fear and discrimination. Cause worked very, very hard to assure that we all will not only engage um, and be some part of an amorphous future, but rather that, that our students and those younger than some of us would be able to lead them and all of us to a more inclusive, better future and a less cynical future, and that was caused. He knew how easy it was to distract our gaze 
from this weird fascination or resignation or whatever it is from North Korea or DC or a devastated Houston or whatever it was. And that at times it's hard to plant the banner for freedom and peace and justice and centeredness for all people and all of our living world. Um, Cause was right there helping all of us in this audacious possibility that we could fill our life with compassion and hope. We saw our campus, he saw our campus, and the Channel Islands themselves as a place of hope and optimism, and he was an optimist. He was always an optimist. Kids that had never camped could camp. Hell yes. Species that were endangered a few years ago, they're saved, delisted. Hell yes. He lived for optimism, this guy, right? He saw the, this place, the Channel Islands, this campus, as a place, as a beacon to share with other people what is possible. And Cause and his whole family set sail in this new and uncertain sea five years ago because there was new knowledge to be gained, new justice to be won, new hope to be nurtured. And that hope could be won and used for the progress of all people, all people. Cause well understood that the science he so often taught and the great and super awesome technological tools we so often use have no conscience on their own. And whether the skills we import to our students will become a force for good or a force for evil depends on our humanity and compassion. And he never separated those two. Never, it was never the science over here, the anthropology over there, the, the readings over there, the thoughts over here. Everything was always together with cause. And he really felt that that began with interdisciplinary perspectives, with understanding the perspectives of others. And sometimes the other was someone with a different upbringing than us. Sometimes the other was a sandstone cliff. Sometimes it was a dragonfly. Uh, there's no petty strife, there's no prejudice. There's no national conflict in our wild lands and wild seas. Its potential hazards, this wild nature, are real. And the same goes for creating something beautiful and unique within the confines of government bureaucracies. The research station and he and his family, that he and his family birthed and crafted within different institutions that have different cultures and, and different policies and on and on, that wasn't a problem for cause. He was like, let's get on it, dude, let's do it. And he did it. And because sometimes we have these things like logistic barriers or, or other hurdles, people, um, many people told me at times, why are you doing a research station? Why is Channel Islands doing a research station? Why, why one focused on undergraduates? Why bother with building something that can bring school kids from Oxnard? That's nice and all, but why, is that, why would we bother with that? Why choose this as, his goal, as your goal? And then, are you sure we should do that? And I don't think that's allowed. Those kind of things, which I love those phrases. Um, those, are the same, those are the same people that say, why do you want to climb that mountain? Why do you want to fly the Atlantic? Why do you want to go to the bottom of the ocean? Why do you want to go to the moon? Why do you want to integrate those schools? Why do you want to play football at Newbury Park High School? Isn't it dangerous? And that wasn't a problem. Those weren't problems for Cause. So Cause and his family chose to go to Santa Rosa and to Channel Islands to paraphrase President Kennedy, not because it was easy, because it would be hard, because the goal of crafting a special place would serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills, because that challenge is one that they were willing to accept, and one that he was unwilling to postpone, and one which he got to see brought to fruition. Thinking back about our friend in Don's office in 2012, I didn't quite realize how much of an adventure he would take us all on in the intervening years, this institution and our community. And I only knew him for half a decade, but I'm very glad he chose us and chose to help us build this special place. Legacy is a tough thing. It can be like smoke and it can be hard to grasp and it can be hard to describe. But this evening, sitting here, as you guys all are, if you were standing, um, 
it's easy to see that you are his legacy, quite literally. All of you were what he was building. He sculpted that legacy when he was walking in front of us way too fast. <laughs> when he was playing with Solstice, when he was waving goodbye or hello from the pier. And in addition to the, this image of all of you guys here and his legacy, I also see his legacy as this young man back in Don's office in 2012, chomping at the bit to fix the world and craft something amazing. And if he was here, I would think he would say, stop being sad and go out and craft something amazing. So he was very special to our community. And uh, we're very thankful for the time we had with him. So, uh, that's my institutional memory. <laughs> Here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. How about is that better? Okay, cool. Um, I have a couple more 